welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. And this week, we are discussing the movie Woo, which happened to be the first movie Danielle and I ever saw together in the theater. theater. It was May of 1998. We had just met (laughs) our friendship was still blossoming and why we chose to see this movie I'll never know (laughs) I was going to ask you who convinced who to see this movie I'm pretty sure you said let's go see this movie woo and I was like I'm still kind of afraid of her I'm just gonna go along (laughs) with what she says I guess yeah that probably sounds about right because I was like, yes, let's go see this black movie. Let's see how down Jackie is. I feel like it's my, one of my Your, earliest exposures to black cinema. Was in that the movie? form of a comedy. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, that's how I started you off. I mean, we only had up to go from there. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I really thought from the trailers and I know we're going to give our um, ratings, but I remember seeing the trailers and just thinking like, I really want to see it because like she was wearing my signature color. She was in pinks and purples and she had like, you know, cute little sassy attitude in the commercials. And it very much gave me booty call vibes as well. And I thought that movie was hilarious. So I was like, okay, how can we go wrong with Jada? How? Oh, it went so wrong. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> Woo is about an, we'll call her eccentric mm-hmm. young lady. Um, she seems to have her professional life together um, and is kind of put off by men, uh, like players, thinking they're all that. And so her friend's boyfriend sets her up with one of his friends tim played by tommy davidson yes um and so then it's just like one of those typical date night rom-coms where they're all over the city and just antics ensue the whole time so well i definitely totally forgot that this movie took place in new york and so while i was watching it there were some scenes that made me very nostalgic for my New York clubbing days, especially not that I went clubbing hard, but I definitely <laughs> went to a lot of different venues and drank a lot. Don't know Danielle, if it was clubbing. Do you remember when we went to New York and ended up in a like, gay leather club and there was that, only a men's room? <laughs> that was the best night. It was. <laughs> It was so much fun and they were so welcoming to us. They were. That was after we went to that um, restaurant bed before it got closed down. Yeah. And we saw Adam Duritz there. Counting Crows shout out. Yeah. I'm going to have to, um, there's a picture of us in bed. We'll have to post on um, social. I'll have to find it for us. But yeah, that was an insanely lovely night. And um all the men at the um, gay leather club were just lovely to us. I mean, you're, you're not living unless you go to a gay club at least once in your life. It's true. Five stars would pee there again. They <laughs> held the door shut for us. So, we would be safe. <laughs> um, so I know we, I mean, we kind of just said Jada, but we didn't say that Jada Pickett Smith is the star of this movie. And um, as we get into it, We see a lot of different stars and cameos um, in this movie. We have to do Uh, our ratings. Don't forget. Oh, (laughs) so off track already. Well, that's okay. (laughs) We'll rewind. We'll revisit that in a minute. Let me take a note so Ken doesn't yell at me. (laughs) Well, so I guess before we really get started, let's do our ratings rewind. So here's how it goes. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal... Um, the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. So our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would watch on repeat. Five day rental. 
would watch again two-day rental okay but nothing to write home about and same day rental trash straight up gutter with the rat trash (laughs) okay jackie so what was your rating I have a movie ticket stub to prove I saw this movie in the theater. (laughs) Are you pulling a Danielle? (laughs) Don't remember anything about it. I'm going to have to give it a same day rental because it was so underwhelming, apparently, to my Y2K self. And like you said, Booty Call was so amazing. And I vividly remember watching Booty Call. And this was just, it was no booty call. It's not a two day rental. Um, or I'm sorry, same day rental. Okay. Yeah. Well, (laughs) I too don't remember much about the movie. Um, I know we, I remember that we saw it, but I didn't know it was our first movie until you brought it up. Um, I don't recall how I felt about it. I didn't even buy it. So I'm going to say same day rental as well. If you're interested in watching this fabulous piece of cinema, it is for sale on the iTunes store for a whopping $4.99. Yes, friends, not the rental price, the purchase price. And if you don't want to keep this trash, um, (laughs) this lovely movie um you can rent it also i think it's on youtube for rent for about 2.99 so anyway you can't can't miss under five dollars yep let's let's get into it uh woo is played by um as ken exclaimed it's will smith's wife which is not very forward thinking of him but it's because he can't ever remember names ever (laughs) Jada Pinkett Smith uh, plays Wu, the main protagonist in the movie. And then um, we also have Tommy Davidson, that's that's Mm -hmm. uh, playing uh, the love interest Tim. And he's always like he plays the straight man, you know, like he's always the just you know foil to the comedy. Yeah. Yep. But he's a really funny comedian on his own, honestly and truly. I guess we could start at the beginning. So it starts off with Wu walking them streets in a very, what I, I don't know. It's because maybe because she, she's really short, so she could kind of pull it off. She's short and petite and, but that a hundred percent was like a shirt. <laughs> I said, how short is that dress? <laughs> And how did she not show her ass as she's walk- walking the blustery streets of New York City? Yeah. And what really, like, I, I know it's so picky of me, but they zoom into her feet walking and, you know, okay, great. But like, first of all, her shoes were awful and her toes were hanging off the shoes. So I was like, why would we do this? And it's a woman, it's a female director. So I don't know what happened there. Danielle, those are called cliffhangers. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the drag world, toes hanging off the end of your shoes are called cliffhangers. Well, it didn't, wa- it didn't make me want more. So I don't know why it's called that, but that's very hilarious. What I think makes me so sad about this movie, and I know the actors felt the same way because they, um, Tommy Davison was on a Red Table Talk episode with Jada Pickett Smith, and they were disappointed with the script. Um, So there wasn't much to work with, but there was, there was such an opportunity to make this like a potentially iconic character, you know, like a strong, sassy but also fun and vulnerable black woman. Yes. And, you know, a rom-com and it just fell so many times and you could tell that they were trying to make her character very complex um, with layers, but it came off as her being psychotic um, at times. And there was no payoff there. There was no like, resonating backstory of right. like why she feels she has to 
project this image was because like she'd been hurt so many times in the past or anything right but I don't even know if there was an image to project it was just like it was more like an explanation why she was so hesitant to dating or and they talk about they get into it when later on with celestials when she meets up with Celestial later and they talk about the date. And so she's saying all these things that are wrong and Celestial's like pretty much saying, are you sure it's not you? Mm -hmm. And, and so you could tell her kind of like having that realization, Oh, I am being high maintenance and really picky and about stupid stuff and not really looking at him. And then there's that montage of her, like thinking about him. And it's just really ridiculous. Um, but like you said, there's no payoff because there you don't grow to love these characters individually and you don't grow to love them as a couple, mm-hmm. especially with their like chemistry not really being there at all. Um, so it was, that was difficult. So I think for me, as I was watching it, I was more disappointed because here you have really great actors. The concept isn't hard, like everyone does it. Mm-hmm. And it just still fell so short. So it sucked in that way for me. That that aspect of it was was sad. But um, speaking of Celestial, because we brought her up a few times, this is yes. Jada's um, psychic slash friend. It felt like maybe she had been going to her for so long that they became friends I don't know but it did feel like more than just a straight psychic yeah situation. relationship yeah. yeah um and uh celestial is I keep putting an r in there celestial <laughs> is played by a transgendered woman which I was super happy to see that um representation in the movie and then towards the the end of the movie it all of those feelings of pride quickly went away because um towards the end they end up going to what I guess it was a gay club but everyone was in drag yeah so I don't know if it was like an exclusively drag club I don't know um and celestial is there and um uh Timmy's Tim's homeboys are there hanging out it was Tammy Davidson's character correct yeah and two of the friends are kind of quick to to pick up on like the these are men dressed as women some may be trans um and there's one character that remains clueless is like making out with everyone having a super awesome time and then when it's revealed to him that he may have been making out with men, it it was just incredible, like an incredibly homophobic response. And it was so disappointing that it was in, even in the movie, that whole scene just was incredibly, incredibly disappointing. And I hoped, I hope that the entire cast and crew learned something reflecting back on that, that um trans and and, um lgbtq it's not a punchline and it's not something that is used for the butt of a joke that those are their lives yeah unfortunately it's you know especially that time late 90s early 2000s black comedies um using gay characters trans characters as a butt of the joke is was very much a thing (laughs) um well, even in Ace Ventura, like that was yeah. the whole the whole gag third with act, that. Yeah. yeah, reveal reveal, which is all, is super problematic. It was just it was so disappointing because like I could kind of get on like she was over the top and stuff, and but I could kind of like okay, this movie has some funny points, and then that scene happened, and I'm just like, eh, okay. yeah, <laughs> if they had just left her character alone to just beat his friend and you know, not kind of have to speak to it or even bring it up. I thought that would have been great. And they did a really great job of not even bringing it up until that point. 
Um, but the reason I was just saying that about it, the black movies and that being the butt of the joke, it's especially when it comes to, you know, homosexuality and, and in the black community has been such a hard embrace for, especially for black males. Um, so I'm not surprised that Mm -hmm. that movie was like, I'm actually surprised it wasn't worse. I agree. Like it, it was a very toned down version of what you see in some movies. Yeah. Um, but it was still, it was there and it was just incredibly offensive and cringy to a whole group of people. But, um, so obviously Wu, when the movie starts, she gets a, a phone, a voice message. And I was just like, do people still do this? Besides my doctor's office, I don't, <laughs> I don't check a voicemail. It irritates me to even have a message Same. on my phone. So um, there was a few things. There was a voice message. And then at one point she asked him for a quarter so she can make a phone call on a pay yes. phone. <laughs> and I was like, pay phone, what? <laughs> I was just. Because she I, had to check her messages. Right. <laughs> she didn't even call anybody. She did check no. her messages. And then I was just thinking when she was dialing, I was like, oh man, remember when we had to remember phone numbers <laughs> to this day, there are only like four phone numbers. I remember by heart, my grandma's number, my mom's number, her house number. I still don't know her cell phone number, <laughs> Shayla's cell phone number and your cell phone number. That's it. I, if, <laughs> if I got, if I lost my phone, I don't know what I would do. I mean, I, have, I know my immediate family's phone numbers and then Ken's and I don't even know yours sorry you've Damn. changed yours a couple times well yeah I, I guess I can't get mad <laughs> I've had and if Shayla's listening right now my um my one my other bestie she definitely will agree that she has a million phone numbers for me so she can commiserate yeah. and the other thing that Uh, was very prevalent in this movie where it was uh, pagers Um, and how many fights she got in with men about taking on their pager. I don't recall this being a part of the dating situation, but apparently you had to take your man's pager and you were together. I didn't, I didn't understand that whole thing. Yeah, that was, that was confusing. But we or, were, or maybe he like bought a pager specifically for her so he could keep tabs on her. And she was like, no, I'm an independent woman. I'm not <laughs> taking your pager so you can get a hold of me. I'll call you from a payphone if I need to get a hold of you. <laughs> or leave me a message and I'll yeah. find out what you need. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, so she goes to see Celestial and Celestial tells her because she reads tarot cards and she seems, you know, she's a fortune teller and whatnot. She tells her she's, this is going to be her day. It's going to be a great day. And she's going to meet a Virgo. But one of the things that kept on going on in my mind throughout, throughout the whole movie was what sign was woo? Because I was trying to explain the behavior. I was trying to understand mm-hmm. it. If they had thrown in what her sign was, it I don't know. I feel like she would I have to be a better. fire sign. I would, I feel like, or maybe a Taurus, someone oh. that like a Scorpio. I don't know. I don't know what because she wasn't sign- outwardly, outwardly mean. It was just she just had a lot of a lot of feelings about a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, she was very vocal. I could see her being a Leo. Yeah, for sure. That w- that would have given me some completion in life <laughs> if I had known what her sign was. And I saw when I was looking up doing research to other people, that was one of the most searched questions was <laughs> what sign was Woosa? It wasn't just me. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know what sign was Wu. So Wu's like, I'm not trying to hear this. I don't want a man. They're nothing but trouble. She's like, I'm going, I'm going home. I'm living my life. And then she proceeds to go. um, I'm not sure if she, I'm guessing she lives there. So she met up with her cousin, Claudette, who's played by Paula J. Parker. So she wants to hang out and go to clubs and have this whole night planned out with her cousin. And her cousin keeps trying to tell her she's trying to hang with her man tonight and she will not be going to any clubs. 
And so then they go into Claudette's house and we are introduced to Claudette's boyfriend. And I'm like, holy shit, Dave Chappelle's in this movie too. I wrote in all caps, <laughs> Dave Chappelle question mark. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. And he, it was funny because he played like the straight man in this movie too. Like for most of the parts, there were a few bits and we'll, we'll get to that in a oh, second. There, there was, one big bit. <laughs> uh, so while all that's happening, you're introduced to a glimpse into Wu's world with her cousin and obviously her cousin's uh, boyfriend, Lenny, who's played by Dave Chappelle, wants to get rid of Wu for the night because he's trying to do the freaky deaky with his, with his girlfriend. Um, which Wu said your night is going to consist of night yard and a bucket of fried chicken. So I, I think I figured out what night yard is. So it was the like booms Boone's farm knockoff wine. Cause yes. he had a, in one scene, he had two bottles of <laughs> night yard and a bucket of fried chicken. So Wu was not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not a special night for me. And he yeah. very much liked uh, chicken, but <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about that scene now, because if not, we're just going to say <laughs> later and, it's and we won't be obnoxious. <laughs> so look, we're all grown ups here <laughs> and well, I'm so Wu was sent away to his friends for a blind date so that they have the house to themselves. He has his night yard <laughs> bucket of fried chicken. And then afterwards, it moves into the bedroom. It's time for dessert. <laughs> and some people don't like sweets. They like role play. And they like chicken. And no, I don't mean actual fried chicken or baked chicken or any kind of edible well, that, chicken. But he was eating chicken while she was doing her dance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yes, that is correct. He was eating, but <laughs> his real main course was Claudette in a full on chicken number. Like she was wearing this bright yellow feather. Oh, you know what it is? I put in my notes is that it's as if Big Bird made a line of lingerie. Now picture that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it was. A hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> and, but I do love the attention to detail. I mean, she looked lovely in that <laughs> chicken get up. It was not. <laughs> Show me them chicken legs. No, Show me them chicken wings, girl. Show off them chicken wings. Let me see them thighs. <laughs> and then he makes her like a chicken oh my for, god for the time limit what was the time limit like one minute you have to act like a chicken for one minute I, and he is dressed as a pimp i don't even know it the scene starts off with him in a cape a cane and i really don't know what his character is i'm going to get i you know what dave Chappelle has a thing for pimps because he loved to do it on the Chappelle yeah. show he definitely did some form of it in Half Baked. So I'm guessing he went to the and producers. And he talks about it in his stand up. Yeah. Too. I think he went to the producers and the writers and, like, I got this. Don't worry. <laughs> Get me a cape and a cane. And this, this is going to be the best take. And a bucket of fried chicken. <laughs> and then he sprinkled, what was that on his, his breadcrumbs? <laughs> they were breadcrumbs all up from his like <laughs> boxer line all the way up his chest. And he, told her to eat like a chicken like they practice <laughs> bread crumbs off of his stomach and she, <laughs> she she definitely did do it like a chicken and I yes. was dying laughing and honestly guys if you don't want to watch this movie we understand but if you do fast forward everything and just watch this clip it's just it makes it worth it just YouTube woo chicken scene and it should come up and it is so bizarre but fucking hilarious. I think that 
the good thing is that at least Dave Chappelle's boxer game stepped up quite a few notches from half baked. Agreed. Yeah, he didn't look like he was swimming in his clothes. I'll I'll just put that out there. <laughs> um, so this is all, you know, oh, these are all he side- called her. He called her a chicken hoe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me just get to my notes to where. <laughs> and uh, he made her call him Big Daddy. Yes. Yes. Where is that scene in my notes? <laughs> because I had so much. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> what is a chicken hoe? You know, Big Daddy loves chicken. Then I put Big Bird line of lingerie. Let me see them hot wings. <laughs> I did write also that I very much liked her. Um, not it's not pantyhose. What are those things called? Fishnets. Her yellow fishnets. Mm-hmm. They were cute. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so all of that happened. It was a side story, and then we don't hear from these characters again after that. There's no. Nope culmination there's no talk about like if Wu had gone gone back to their house to talk about the date or like when she and Tim had a falling out and then her cousin maybe called her out on her stuff too like maybe that would have wrapped it together but they were just gone 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 they were in chicken but bucket of chicken bliss (laughs) Danielle so if we're going back um we move over to Tim and we get to get a glimpse of his life. And so he's very much nerdy, the lame woman of the group, but that's not, that's saying a lot considering his friends, which I'll quote myself verbatim are absolute trash. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, Oh, the things they were doing to women, the cat calling, the persistent, like, hey, you're going to come home with me? Gross. Stop. Don't do that. It, it was it was just disgusting and uncalled yeah. for, really and truly. In multiple scenes. So every scene they were in, Ugh. every scene they were in. And I don't know if that was done to show the contrast between them and their friend and between Tim, Tommy Davidson's character or what. I did laugh that they called him cosine. <laughs> and they called him home alone because yes, he was Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> I did when they were in the park at the beginning and his friends were just being awful to women. I did write, is that a Zima he's holding? Because Oh, like I didn't see that. <laughs> Good old Zima. So pretty much cosine, aka I mean. Um, Tim goes back to his house. He's home alone. Um, and then he gets the call from Lenny saying, look, I have this girl that you should take out on a date. And I actually wrote, uh, dating in the old days before having to swipe and deal with that crap. And but- Tim's response was, does she look like an anteater? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what to say about that. Like who have, who, who? did he think and, of and when they show him in his apartment I think it was it must have been before no it was after he hung up agreed to go on the blind date with Wu and he's like cleaning everything up because it, it was like it wasn't not, messy it wasn't no. a man's it wasn't a man's apartment messy it was like he had like a few clothes draped around in like a pizza box or something yeah but at one point he runs out naked and you just see Tommy Davidson booty and I was like, I didn't see that part. What? Yeah. I might have, I might have missed it. Was you didn't? <laughs> we, I know we didn't have an extended cut situation because we saw no. the same damn movie. Yeah. Okay. No, it was just like him running out, but it was just but for no reason. I don't know. I thought maybe they thought it was going to be funny. I, I was just like, that's that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He got naked and booty called too. He likes so, to be naked. Maybe. So let's talk about Daryl. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Jackie. I love him so much. Oh, Danielle, I saw him at ACL Live one time. 
or the ECL Music Festival, the only time I went, oh, Danielle. I met I LL missed- Cool J. Did I tell you that? You I didn't did know not. you loved LL Cool J that much. You did not tell me you <laughs> met LL Cool J, Danielle. So, Daryl, <laughs> um, who is the ladies' man, who does apparently is not too far off from his normal life, ladies love Cool James. Or so, cool Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, um, Tim goes across the hall to his neighbor Daryl's house and to get some music. Um, again, it's just reminding us it's the 90s, so there's no iTunes. It's a, it's a cassette tape. It's not even a CD. It's a cassette tape. And I believe he called it the Panty? In Her Panties Mix. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he said, by the time you get to B-side, y'all should both be naked. <laughs> I mean, it's all out. So, I mean, it, it wouldn't take to the B-side, Danielle. All I had to do is lick the lips one time. <laughs> 100%. My other note says, I want a sex kick in a Crown Royale bag. Because as a Black person, I... Uh, appreciated that we use crown royal bags for fucking everything i have friends i won't name them who use them for scrabble bags i (laughs) people keep their bags and use them for all sorts of things so why throw out a good bag i'm not mad at it i just i'm not either i loved to peep that (laughs) i wrote i want a sex kit in a crown royal bag i do okay well or as uh, Wu called it, you have a little freak kit. Who says this line? Because I don't know. I have it as a note, but I don't know who it goes to. Fine as frog hair. I think it's Tim. Jesus Christ. She's as fine as frog hair. Yeah, that was, Kim, Kim was like, what's frog hair? I don't know either. <laughs> I feel like we needed a a freaking dictionary just to get through this movie. So throughout the whole movie, I kept waiting for there to be some hit song, some R&B, some some hit song to really come on and I'd be like, okay, because every Black movie of the 90s and 2000s had at least one the the soundtrack the movie might have been trash but the soundtrack was always banging yeah this movie did not have one the only thing i heard was t-shirt and my panties on and that was it and that was kind of in the background and she said when she walks into the dance club um they're playing a song and the song was actually called woo woo and she <laughs> said it was her song and it's by mick light because i looked it up <laughs> so i'm mick- like is that how Hold she up. Hold on, make light or MC light? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I made my C small and so my brain read Nick. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I made him Scottish. (laughs) I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I apologize to um, the population of MCs that I have now offended by calling you guys mix. Uh, and not make it like a slang, <laughs> a derogatory term, just uh, Jackie's brain doesn't read shit correctly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that laugh. Um <laughs> Okay, Wu finally gets to comes over. Yes, Kim is very excited at, at how beautiful she is. She shows up and she's gorgeous because it's Jada, right? And this fan fucking tastic pantsuit. Oh, I remember those <sighs> pants. They were like those shiny pants, but they were They're like a satin, pedal pushers, satin, satin. Yeah. Um, with like this 
halter vest over it and then a fitted pink blazer on top of that that was also like a satin tee yeah material Um, her heels were chunky sandals that were also like the pink match the pink in her jacket yeah at one point they're going from uh destination to destination and she takes off the the satiny halter vest to reveal just a sequins halter top which is also that gorgeous shade of blue yeah and that's what she wears for the rest of the movie they have a rocky beginning of their courtship because they're talking and then Wu like I really say it's Wu she put she set up Tim quite a few times where she was giving mixed messages of trying to like seduce him and then saying ha ha you're trying to just everything's about sex and then his weirdo friends come and it's just it's like there's so many instances just in that scene alone where I'd have been like I would have left either one of the characters I would have just left there's no chemistry what is this just taking things out of context or like misconstruing what he's saying like he would say something like that's very benign and she would manipulate it to be something that it seems more sinister and right it was just yeah she just immediately was incredibly defensive and was high on the crazy scale yes just getting to know him i wrote i wrote lou goes from zero to 60 real quick Yes, she does. The next scene, they head to a fancy restaurant and Tim is like very proud of himself. It's one of those she-she restaurants. He gets there, he tries to show off that he can actually say some of these uh, menu items that are Italian instead of just saying the numbers because clearly he doesn't know how to say it. Wu shows him up by actually saying things in Italian. Which Um, means that she has a level of education and culture about her. So why is she acting so insane yeah i don't even want to say ghetto that's not the right word she no. was just acting crazy she was just bad shit crazy well she did do there was some there was a few things that i will have to call out as being hood as hell in this movie that she she did first and foremost when she saw her friend go ahead and do it <laughs> go ahead i know you've been but, dying hold on i gotta gear up because i wrote it in all caps <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she's screaming through the plate glass window because she sees her friend outside on the street and instead of being a normal person and being like sorry i see my friend outside i want to go say hi she is literally <laughs> screaming <laughs> in like this five-star restaurant took it not my girl took it and she goes out there and then she wants tim to come out there to meet her friend and he's like dude we're gonna lose our table like it looks like we've just left left this this establishment already these white people looking at us crazy and so he doesn't get up at first she goes and sees her girl Tuki who is in an African wedding and she's like is it okay that I didn't wear the head garb and I was like yes it is 100% okay that you didn't then eventually Tuki must go to her wedding or whatever and then here comes Wu with a plate of cake in a restaurant. Yes. She brought- <laughs> and it was coconut mango. That's a Ew. very polarizing cake flavor for a wedding. I don't like coconut. I don't either. Yeah. Again, Wu starts acting fucking ridiculous. Um, she, they're in Granted, this- she was, she would, they were sat at a crappy table. Yeah. And there was like fake plants hanging in her face and this like vintage fire extinguisher that she kept elbowing because it's right in her area and so I would have just hey could you scoot the table a little bit closer to you so we don't have to sit in this shit but she takes the fire extinguisher stands on the chair and like puts it up on a higher shelf yeah and then the the waiters are like you can't do that you can't do that and then for some reason she's like and what does this rope do and grabs a rope that is very obviously securing something to the wall. <laughs> and it's this giant fancy chandelier that swings through the restaurant. And so that sends waiters flying and cakes starting fires. And so they're quickly kicked out of the restaurant. 
as they should have been yes. as soon as she started yelling Tuki. The other thing that she does is she pulls out a picture frame in the like and they're not even fighting <laughs> they wrote it down <laughs> <laughs> they're not even really fight i don't even know why she decides to choose violence in that moment but she pulls out a picture frame from tim's house of a of a girl and tim together and says and who is this First of all, you've been treating this guy like shit this whole date already. And now you're being possessive over a girl that he's a picture of. You don't know if it's his sister or whatever. And he's like, what the hell? Why did you take that out of my house? And she's ready to question him. And where did she keep it? Because her purse is <laughs> I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> I don't know. After all the chaos happens and they get kicked out, you don't see them actually getting kicked out. The next scene, you just see Wu outside and ready to go to the next place, which is for them, I think, to go salsa dancing. And I want to say they were in Brooklyn from what I could see in, in that in that movie. I have to give Jada credit. She had some moves on the dance floor. She I is said, not dancing with him, but yes. I said Jada can dance. She <laughs> was, it was impressive. Yeah, I she was did like, a great job. Yeah. Tim is getting drinks. And of course, he runs into his trash ass f- friends. Mm. She's just trying to really loosen him up. Mm-hmm. It's really just that interaction with the trash ass friends. And this is the time that Wu, she takes some time to really put these idiots in their place, which I think mm-hmm. is great because they're right back at catcalling, but just in this over enthusiastic, just over the top way. Out of all the scenes, I think this scene was the one that I had the least problems with because it felt very much of like, a okay, it's an uptight guy and this girl that's kind of a more free thinking and her just trying to get him to loosen up and enjoy himself right. more. Yeah. But the only thing I took from this whole scene was when she was making fun of them and she called them different ice cream flavors. I wrote, not nappy road. That made me laugh. <laughs> So they leave that area and do they go to the club after that? Yeah. Well, I was really excited because again, one of the great things about living in New York or going to New York is just the amount of secret bars and clubs. And so they go to this really rough neighborhood. Tim is very nervous and he pulls out his wheel lock, which that brought me old school days. Yeah, because- I wrote the club and Ken goes, that's not a club. <laughs> and yeah, it's a, that's a, a off the rack. Club. <laughs> so he locks up his car and he makes a big fuss about it. And he's like, are you sure this is a club? Cause it literally looks like an abandoned area. There's graffiti mm-hmm. all over the walls. They go in and of course they go in this elevator and it's just like a huge ass club, which I thought was cool. And here comes another just insane moment where they're just standing on the outskirts, but then they get to the dance floor. And of course she goes, that's my song. And, and it was Woo Woo by MC Light. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and then Woo, like you could tell that she wants him to dance. And I actually wrote, Ugh, hate a dude that can't dance because I thought that's what was going on that he couldn't dance Mm -hmm. but then he finally does ask her to dance and she's like oh no the moment has passed it's been like two seconds it's not even that long and she's Hmm. getting like super mad at him and Um, then the whole she meets up with one of the pager men he's there and he's like why aren't you taking my pager now you're with this fool blah 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 punches Tim and then she does what I, I I call it the signature Jada knockout punch. She does the the thumbs on the nose. She backs up, puts that support on that right leg, <laughs> pop. And this because I I say this because this is like got to be the third or fourth movie she does this. She does this in Low Down Dirty Shame with Keenan Wayne's. Mm-hmm. She does it in Girls Trip. I'm not sure if she does it in set it off. Thank you. You're welcome. And set it off. I'm not sure if she does it in set off. And it's the classic 10 things I hate about you, 
scenario where it's like the date gets knocked out. So then the, the girl, girl has to take care has of to stuff. take care of it. Yeah. I was like, that's that's a pretty classic trope from that time <laughs> frame. I wrote, are they having a fight about a pager? And then yes, I wrote, yes, Jada were. loves loves to punch people out in movies. Yes. One thing that I did forget was when they were in that payphone scene, Denise, who is the girl in the picture frame, who was Tim's ex, and why they call him cosign because he co-signed on Denise's car. She but goes, it wasn't just a car. It was a <laughs> fucking Corvette. I'm glad you knew which one it was because I said red car. <laughs> he drives a Volvo. She drives a Corvette. Yeah, she goes speeding by and Wu is trying to check her messages. The car goes speeding by and he's, she sees him trying to engage with Denise and Denise is like, see you later, sucker. And she's out. <laughs> And that's when Wu gives him a pep talk that he needs to loosen up. But then she gives, I love this. There are people who make things happen and people who watch things happen. Which one are you? I did like that too. And I was like, yes, yes. I very much feel that same way. Moving forward. We come out of the club. Yes. And his alarm system and his (laughs) not a club are laying in the street and there is no Volvo. Oh and man. Ken said, who the fuck wants to steal a Volvo? <laughs> in, in Brooklyn, <laughs> anything goes. <laughs> so then they have to go down to the precinct to file a report at 2 a.m. <laughs> and they meet, oh, wait, wait, I got this name. Oh, they meet Crayola. Mm-hmm. They meet Crayola, who of and course is on the talk- phone. <laughs> and she is talking to her friend, What's Purina. Her- <laughs> <laughs> Which totally reminds me of Booty Call because the, the main chick's name is Listerine. <laughs> they call her Listy. <laughs> yes. So he's trying to engage her about his car. He's upset, as any normal person would yes. be, that your car has been stolen. Wu's like, I'll see you later. She goes, she's like, I'm going to go check someone out in a cell. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? Apparently her friend is in In jail precinct and she's just going to go say hi. I don't know. Yes. And he's like arguing with Crayola because she's just like not even trying to help him in this situation. Then another cop comes out and Crayola says she's being harassed at her job. And the cop tries to like get all over Tim. He wasn't very nice because I mean. He's frustrated. Not, yeah. And so he, he was saying stuff like called her uneducated or something. Oh, and no. He said, said something about her GED. And she said, hey, I almost got my GED. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So then he's getting harassed by the cop. And then here comes Wu tries to calm things down and apparently she's got everybody in the precinct wrapped around her fingers and then that I think that was the breaking point for Tim Mm -hmm. and he like loses his shit on her and calls her says that she has she has issues because she's she's fine she's always been fine her whole life fine aka very good looking Mm -hmm. beautiful woman and so therefore she can act as crazy as she wants to and he just goes off on her and Wu still like doesn't quite get that it's her that's yeah being an ass so that was frustrating she storms out she leaves right yeah yes and then he has this come to Jesus fantasy sequence but it's not Jesus it's Lando Calrissian yes Billy D (laughs) Williams I don't know who called him and said I got a check for you you got to do one scene it was so like y'all had the budget for all these cameos and you couldn't get the script right. It's just it's a damn tragedy. And really, like, it everything is. Everything he says to him, like it makes no sense. It's None. not uplifting. Not at all. It's not. And I was just like, Billy D, you got Star Wars money. You don't need to be doing this. Well, no, fuck Star Wars money. He had um, Colt forty five money. That's true. Is that- his face was on the Colt 45 cans. 
so then Tim walks out. He has no car. He's like trying to walk to get somewhere to hail a taxi or something. And because he's in the hood. Yeah. He, he perceives someone is following him. At first you don't see anyone. And I love that he shouts to no one. <laughs> sure. I'm glad I took those Kung Fu lessons. <laughs> <laughs> And so then he is approached by a woman who says, give me all your money. Give me your wallet. He refuses. And then two of her. He doesn't just refuse. He tries to play her. He's like, you ain't sticking me up. What you gonna do? Yes. And then and she calls in reinforcements. Yeah. Which were like two big dudes. Yeah. And so then he's like running down the street <laughs> trying to get away from them. And he gets to the subway and He's like, yes, I've foiled their plan because he gets into the subway car and the doors close and they're standing outside and he's talking all the shit. And then guess what happens? The fucking doors open right back up and he gets robbed. So now he has no money to get anywhere. Nope. It's pretty much worst night ever. Yeah. And while this is happening, Wu is meeting up with Celestial, right? Mm -hmm. At the club. And Celestial tells her, it's in the stars, Wu. And mm-hmm. this is when, what we talked about earlier on the, in the episode about mm-hmm. just that very uncomfortable club scene. So we don't need to go through all that, but pretty much Wu's called out on her bullshit, kind Celest- of. Yeah, Celestial says, Wu's going through the night and how awful Tim is and blah, blah, blah. And Celestial's like, you're making these into problems. They're not problems. She's like, all I hear is him trying really hard and you not giving him a chance. So Wu starts to recognize that maybe she is the problem. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then she gets in a cab and she's trying to find Tim, which honestly, it's kind of miraculous that she does find him because she ain't got no pager. She has no cell phone. And he took the subway, so it's not like he's where she left him. Right. She does find him walking the streets, and he gets in the cab. But as she pulls up, of course, she gets him soaked. The cab, like, completely runs through a pothole, and some water splashes all over him. And it's just like, when will this hell end for this man? Mm -hmm. And then the taxi driver is so sweet and, like, turns around and hands him a handkerchief and says, To help with the wetness, which I thought was very (laughs) kind of him. (laughs) So Wu admits that she has been difficult to deal with and kind of apologizes to Tim, but she has a stop to make. She goes to make a stop and tells Tim to stay in the car and you see her- It's like a street party. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, Like a block party or some sort of some, yes, something was going on, like there was music or whatever and she goes over and it's this guy that we see in the earlier in the movie that she's arguing with on the phone and foxy brown another cameo they oh, I didn't even notice that yeah so foxy brown plays oh they she, do call her foxy though. they call her foxy <laughs> and so it seems like the guy foxy and Wu are fighting and they make it seem like they're fighting because they're ex-lovers and he's trying to move on And so Tim is sitting in the car and he is like, oh, hell no, here we go again. So he gets out and he's ready to to like call her out and but also say, don't take my lady. Mm -hmm. And he finds out that the guy is actually her brother. That whole scene, you could have cut it out for me. Like it didn't do anything. Well, I guess what what I felt like they were going for was like restitution. She's realized that she's being crazy and unreasonable and if she's gonna allow if she wants to be happy in her life and allow love in then she needs to be respectful of other people's love yeah is what I kind of felt like they were going for it just wasn't well executed yeah I think they should have when they had that whole montage they should have included all the wrongdoings then Mm -hmm. and then she goes to right her wrongs and maybe meet Tim afterwards like he's like the last stop or whatever but yeah like go visit her cousin and say I'm sorry I keep on trying to ruin your relationship yeah you know that kind of thing yeah it's it's just messy after that's all cleaned up 
is to find bitch ass Denise so they can get that Corvette back. The mm-hmm. core, the Corvette back. The Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's what happened. No, he asked for his Slim Jim, which is, you know, the the metal bar that uh, you can use to unlock cars. Tim asks the taxi driver for his Slim Jim. And the taxi driver's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, I know taxi drivers always have a Slim Jim. And so they pay him $15 for a Slim Jim so that he could pop the the locks on the Corvette, which sets the very specific alarm off. (laughs) Yeah, it was like tailored to that car. (laughs) And here comes Denise out with her rollers, her face mask, everything. But of course, like a little bitch, Tim hides behind the car and so then we was just left there saying you know pretending she's some sort of collection agent to to repo the car Mm -hmm. and so Denise calls out Tim for being a bitch ass for not having the balls to come take his car back and then Tim gets gangsta all of a sudden and goes and get a brick (laughs) and knocks well I'm like the keys are just in her hand you could have grabbed it from her why are you fucking up the window with the brick Yeah, after he messes up the window. So he breaks the window. I guess he had to show some manlyhood, supposedly. While while Denise is distracted by the window breaking, Wu snatches the keys out of her hand. And they go striking off into the night. And you think, okay, this this is a little fun. And then he decides to do a complete 180 with the car. Instead of just pulling over in the direction they were in, he pulls a like does a U-turn in the middle of the street, leaves the car in the middle of the street. Yes. And decides, oh, because Wu says, that's my song again. And (laughs) he's like, I'm not going to miss this moment and pulls her out of the car and they dance in the street. And what happens, Jackie? An 18-wheeler destroys the Corvette. Like, it had enough time to stop, though. No more (laughs) cosign. And you know Denise's whack-ass didn't buy any insurance. Mm, Yeah. That's Uh, a problem. And that's how the movie ended. Yeah. So Ken's takeaway (laughs) was, that was rough. (laughs) Neither. Yeah, it, it had potential. It had all of the elements and had a great cast that they could have utilized further. I mean, you only see LL in that one first scene. It would have been nice for like Wu and Tim to go their separate ways, like Tim go back to the apartment and talk through it with Daryl and he gives like some advice or something, yeah. like just something for some character development and progression of the right. that wasn't just Wu and Tim centric or Tim being like you know what she really pulled me out of my comfort zone I want to win her back and mm-hmm. Daryl's like well let me give you the win your bitch back <laughs> kit in a crown royal bag I got you <laughs> and once you want to get to <laughs> side b y'all should be naked but if you want some tea about this movie Tommy Davidson, he wrote his biography or memoir. Memoir Mm -hmm. is the right word. He said that Will Smith went all gangsta on him after kissing Jada on set. What had happened was that last scene where they're dancing in the street and one of the takes, Tommy thought that it would feel right if they kissed. Mm -hmm. And so he kissed Jada without giving her a heads up. And Will was on set and you could, you know, I guess he was saying that, you know, you could see Jada flinch. He didn't mm-hmm. know that he couldn't really just do that in, in the, in the scene without like talking about it. Right. And so Will like came to his trailer and they were arguing. He said it almost came to blows pretty much, but they worked through it. He, you know, they're still friends to this day and even on again on that red table talk they discuss some things that Jada actually figured out about Tommy like she could tell that he was having a really rough day one day Mm -hmm. and asked him about it and he tried to play it off but then he told her it turns out that his birth mother actually reached out to him that day and so Jada made it that they could shut down the film so that he could you know kind of deal with that Yeah. yeah I thought that was cool that they're still friends and 
Yeah. You know, they work through that. What else you got? Well, so Tupac was supposed to be in this movie, but was shot five days before the principal photography started, which I can imagine that, like, I don't even know how Jada pulled off this movie in that Mm -hmm. state of mind because they were so close. So that definitely gives an idea. Then that whole thing where I was asking what Wu's Zodiac sign was. Mm -hmm. Again, still don't know. (laughs) But apparently the birthday when Tim, when she asked him what his birth, when his birthday is, and he says September 18th, making him a Virgo. That's actually Jada Pickett Smith's real birthday. Oh, well, that's easy to remember. (laughs) Also, all the cameos that we were talking about, we could have had two more. Pam Greer and Isaac Hayes were originally cast to be Wu's parents, but their scenes were deleted. Um, I wonder how that would have been woven in. There there didn't (laughs) feel like a place for it. There was no place for all the other scenes. So (laughs) what's the difference? We may um, have lost the chicken scene for the parent scene. Hell no. Can't lose that. <laughs> I think I'm going to watch that before I go to bed. <laughs> cluck, cluck, baby. <laughs> okay, so now that we have did the thing, what's your rating? I mean, it's not, it's not horrible. It's not like walk out of the theater horrible, and I've seen some of those movies. Mm-hmm. I'll give it a, a two-day rental. Like, it's just, it for, is what it is. Yeah. It tried and it failed. Yes. Uh, there were some really funny moments in it. So yes. that's why it's not total garbage. It's a two-day rental for me. I'm definitely going to agree. It's a two-day rental for me as well. I don't foresee myself watching it over again if I don't have to, but I will be watching again that chicken scene. Every um, once in a while is a pick-me-up. Yeah, because <laughs> it's just, just funny. The one thing I can say is that a lot of these movies, these first few movies we've been watching have been excruciating to get through, but I, it's almost like I love the movie after we do our episodes because we have so much fun just yes. talking about it. <laughs> so I, I, I guess it's worth it. So before we end, I do have some shout outs. So I just want to thank every single person who has found our little podcast and who has been listening uh, consistently, it seems, because we hit a milestone this week. We had 500 downloads, which is super exciting for (laughs) us. So excited. Um, So thank you to everybody who's been listening sharing again don't forget to follow us on social we're on tiktok twitter facebook instagram we are no more late fees Um, we are working on our youtube so you could see some of these wonderful recordings but with our wonderful beautiful faces so that should be interesting again we just want to thank nikki sue for being on the show last week oh my god we we got an interview with someone who's in the movies. She was so sweet. So and nice. It was such a lovely conversation with her. We were super excited to do it. Well, it was a lot of fun. Um, I also want to shout out one of our Twitter followers who made us this really cool birdhouse, which I thought I was being very secretive <laughs> by getting this made for Jackie. And of course, she can see everything we tweet because she's on the account. So it wasn't very secretive. So at Mika Dean on Twitter, thank you so much. I saw her and her husband. I think it's like a duo, but they I saw them make a really cute blockbuster birdhouse. And I was like, oh my God, I want one in our colors. And they made this amazing birdhouse and it's so cute. And it has our little logo like blockbuster on top. So when... Jackie gets it to her house. We'll take a picture and share it. So thank you for that. Do you want to shout out your friend, Stephanie? Yes. So my friend, Stephanie, she just tools around on her little ukulele and she's so lovely and sweet. And so I had asked her if she would make a intro song for us. So she's been hard at work making it. She sent us the melody and she's working on lyrics now. And we, I just, 
I adore her so much. She's as soon as the podcast drops on Thursday, she's immediately listening to it, giving us feedback. So she's wonderful. And thank you so much, Stephanie. And we can't wait to hear our finished product. Yeah, I can't wait. Thank you so much. Um, Well, that's really exciting. Uh, There's so many things I never thought we would have like an intro song. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so oh, and that's... we have stickers on the way. Yay. They were shipped. Cool. That's I'm exciting. so excited. Okay. Yay. Well, that's it for class announcements. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Check us out next week and have a great, wonderful weekend.